My name is Susan Andrews and I'm an associate professor here in civil engineering with the Drinking Water Research Group. Uh, there are two other professors in the Drinking Water Research Group, uh, Ron Hoffman and uh, Bob Andrews. And together we supervise about 30 different students and staff, all working on drinking water related issues. Since my background is in chemistry, I look at chemical aspects of water treatment. So things like byproducts of doing disinfection processes, um, trying to remove contaminants from water, that kind of thing. That's, that's really my focus. So you may have heard of um, uh, things like pharmaceuticals being in water. I look at how they might be removed, um, whether we really need to remove them, what are the risks associated with them being in water, and uh, what kind of byproducts do they form once uh, chlorine or chloramines, which is what we use for drinking water disinfection, is added into the water to make it microbially safe. This is one of two of our main experimental rooms uh, in which the students will uh, take samples and uh, use bench scale treatment processes to try and optimize those processes to remove particular contaminants or improve disinfection. Let me give you a couple of quick examples of the kinds of research projects that my group works on. Um, they'll both involve using uh, UV light to uh, help to break down chemicals in, in drinking water. Uh, one of them is sort of high-tech and uses very novel materials that the UV light interacts with in order to make the chemical even stronger and break down even more of the contaminants. And the other one is more grassroots in that um, it's trying to do similar things but with uh, solar light. So for developing nations, um, rural and remote locations where uh, advanced water treatment facilities aren't available, uh, we're looking at ways of trying to find reliable drinking water treatment methods that rely on sunlight. Uh, nice renewable resource, very green kind of technology. And for that, we've, we're looking at trying to um, enhance solar energy by using novel nanomaterials to um, create what are called hydroxyl radicals, which are very, very oxidative, even more strongly oxidative than chlorine is, um, to break down chemicals in the water and, and help to disinfect. On the other side of uh, the coin, we have uh, similar types of processes um, at very large scale with millions of liters of gallons being treated per day, where we might have um, large UV generating uh, light systems which will irradiate light in a reactor, in a water treatment plant, and if we add hydrogen peroxide to that reactor along with the UV light, we get the same kinds of hydroxyl radicals. Um, it's a much easier system to scale up, and so that's why it's uh, gaining popularity in drinking water treatment, as opposed to this other that I talked about, which is really more for, for very small and, and uh, remote locations. As far as the immediate and long-term application of these technologies, the large-scale advanced oxidation or the UV peroxide processes are actually being used now and what our role is is really to try and optimize them for different purposes. Um, the small-scale and remote system applications, that's pretty new and I think perhaps in the next five or ten years we hope to be able to find um, cost-effective ways to make these materials such that they can be deployed um, a lot more widely. My background is really quite varied in that I started off in science and I took my bachelor's and master's degree at the University of Alberta studying chemistry primarily. And when I got my first job it was with a research group at the University of Alberta in civil engineering looking at drinking water treatment. Um, I was there for about five years and during those five years I found out that there's a lot that's still unknown about the chemistry of drinking water and so I chose to stay three more years and get my PhD in that area and that's basically how I've come to be in this particular area and what I bring to the drinking water research group um, which I think is a little bit different than maybe uh, other engineers do. Uh, well, we've just come in from the wet lab area, or the experimental area, into our analytical labs where we take samples that we have generated from our various experiments in the room we were just in. And now we want to measure changes in the concentrations of um, various contaminants 
using these pieces of equipment. Uh, the area is split into two sub areas. One area gives us concentrations of inorganic components, um, things like chloride and fluoride and nitrate and nitrate and that kind of thing. The other area is uh, where we do all the real fancy work and that's where the pesticides and taste and odor compounds and um, pharmaceuticals are mentioned. Uh, you might ask me if I drink the tap water and I say definitely yes. Uh, I, if anything that my research has taught me it's that uh, the water treatment processes that are in place right now for municipal water um, are at, at least as good if not better than what you get from bottled water sources. So yes, we, uh, both my husband and I, we do drink our tap water regularly.